In this module, we continue our exploration of culture and cultures as systems of meaning. In this first presentation, we'll look at meaning, worldview, and storytelling. The late anthropologist Clifford Geertz defined culture as webs of significance created by human beings. In turn, we find ourselves suspended in the webs of culture. Geertz espoused an interpretive or semiotic approach to cultural understanding in which the task of the anthropologist is to study symbol systems as systems of meaning. In this presentation, we'll follow Geertz's lead and explore some of the ways that human beings create and express meaningful worlds. In this presentation, we'll look at how these worlds of meaning shape and express our worldview, in part through the stories we tell about ourselves. In subsequent presentations, we'll turn to how we create and express meaning through symbols, metaphors, and ideologies, as well as through expressive culture, including the games we play, myth, art, and ritual. Human beings are almost condemned to live in meaningful worlds. We attempt to account for our experiences of the world by using shared assumptions about how the world works. Who am I? Who are we? What is the world like? What makes me the way I am? What makes us the way we are? Why is the world the way it is? These are some of the questions we ponder. To find answers, we turn to culturally shaped systems of meaning. Part of the answers to our basic questions come from our worldview. Worldview is an encompassing picture of the world created by members of a community. Here we see a New Yorker cover from the 1970s that pokes fun of the worldview of New Yorkers for whom anything west of Manhattan quickly fades into insignificance. Our worldview helps us to make sense of our everyday experience. If you're a Christian, for example, you might interpret daily trials as tests sent by God and human weakness as a work of the devil. In other societies, misfortune might be interpreted as reminders from neglected spirits or ancestors or the machinations of spiteful witches. In the global economy, money gives meaning and urgency to our daily strivings. Worldview is an encompassing picture of the world created by members of a community. It also helps us to make sense of everyday experience and to articulate our experiences in ways others will comprehend. In the television series, Sons of Anarchy, about a California outlaw motorcycle gang, gang loyalty to the club, strictly defined gender roles, and violent retribution for betrayals inform worldview. A key way that we express meaning and worldview is through storytelling, in words and in action. In our culture, with its emphasis on individual success, we tell stories about highly successful people in the world of business and athletes at the top of their sport. These individuals, in turn, tell their stories, in part, through their actions. The stories we tell serve, in part, to create the world we live in. The fairy tales we heard growing up, for example, tell us about the world and how we should live in it. At the same time, social actions communicate. A handshake, a kiss, a toast, a slap, all communicate our intentions to those around us and help us to share and negotiate cultural meanings. Earlier in the semester, we read Laura Bohannon's Shakespeare in the Bush, in which Bohannon retold Hamlet to her Tiv hosts in Nigeria. Bohannon told a story that originally expressed an Elizabethan worldview, but Tiv elders interpreted the story according to their own view of the world. Interpretations of key elements of Hamlet, of ghosts, sexual misconduct, youth action, 
bad luck, ill will, fate, and suicide express Shakespeare's Elizabethan worldview. The Tiv elders understood the omens, leveret marriage, what they saw as ignorant youth, witches, and death by witchcraft, not according to Shakespeare's or Bohannon's worldviews, but according to their own Tiv worldview. Their culture provided them with the tools to understand, or as we might see it, misunderstand the story. Expressive culture is also a way that we proclaim worldview and meaning, and can also be considered a form of storytelling through performance. In this sense, it is that aspect of a cultural system in which we show ourselves to ourselves. The stories we tell about ourselves and one another also establish our identities along culturally specified lines. What sorts of stories do you tell about yourself that establish your identity as a man or a woman, for example? Some of the stories I tell about myself address the question, what does it mean to be a man? These stories express values that are culturally meaningful. The stories we tell about male identity encourage independence. We like stories about self-made men, for example. Our stories tell us that we menfolk should also be assertive and that a manly man must not be a woman. These stories also encourage us to perform our masculine identity to show others that we're men. We saw this in the previous module in Brady's Bar by the ways men interacted with waitresses as a way of performing maleness for other men. Our actions also tell a story about us. As heterosexual males, we shouldn't touch other men. We demonstrate our independence by not asking people for help. And we never, ever cry. These stories are not, of course, necessarily true. They express dominant cultural norms or expected behaviors. But it's important to note that cultural norms, the expected behaviors associated with them, and the stories we tell change over time. Many of you would surely challenge the stories of masculine identity just told here as sexist.